welcome to another episode of G-Talk, where I speak on random video game related topics from analysis and retrospectives to game design, impressions, and any other concept I find interesting. In this video, I'd like to share my thoughts on simple games. First, what do I mean when I call a game simple? Well, I certainly do not mean easy or unengaging. A simple game is something I would say is effortless to pick up and play, but not necessarily without depth, as I intend to dive into in this video. How about an example of a simple game? What better place to start than the original Super Mario Bros. on NES? What do you need to know to play the game? Four buttons. That's it. No, seriously. Left, right, jump, and run. You might think that only having to know four buttons might make Super Mario Bros. too easy, but while simple, it is not without a huge deal of depth. There are enemies that get harder to dodge, and you'll quickly learn of enemies that can be dispatched by jumping on top of them, and others that cannot be jumped on at all, or the Koopa Troopas that can become weapons by kicking their shell after jumping on top of them. There are also obstacles that test your skills with the game's supposedly simple controls. By holding the run button, you can move more quickly to get through areas where faster movement is necessary, or jump over several dangers by holding the jump button to get extra height. Combining these mechanics is what can ensure your success as you strive to complete the game. Let's make the jump to 3D now. Ah, see what I did there? Another game that exemplifies this idea of simple is Spyro the Dragon. Spyro has about seven major controls that you need to know, so a few more than the last game. You need to move with the left thumbstick, directing the camera around with the right thumbstick. You need to jump, charge, blow fire, and glide with the face buttons. There's also rolling with the right trigger button, and maybe both trigger buttons. Despite moving to 3D, that's all you really need to know to play effectively which is three more controls than Super Mario Bros. However, all these controls are used in tandem and requires increasing skill as you progress throughout the game. For example, there are times when you must jump, glide, and blow fire to safely take out some enemies or charge, jump, and glide to get to places that otherwise seem unreachable. The goal of Spyro is seemingly straightforward but it has enough content to make it very gratifying for all types of gamers. Your job is to collect, or free, all the dragons imprisoned by Nasty Nork. You can fly through the game, huh, and do just that, but you'll start collecting gems and eggs along the way that will eventually unlock additional areas and secrets later in the game. There's also the incentive of 100% completion for those that want the additional challenge. It's comfortable and uncomplicated to play Spyro the Dragon, but there are mechanics within the game that add much more depth for players to explore. Now, all I've discussed so far are platformers. However, I want to take some time to address some other genres. Visual novels like Danganronpa can be engaging with some gameplay twists, but most of the game is just pushing a single button to move through dialogue. Class trials make for an opportunity to combine logic and puzzle solving by literally shooting down arguments. You can also present evidence. You can play Hangman. And you can also play rhythm mini-games, which are not necessarily difficult, but where the game truly shines is in the sheer complexity of the story. Playing the game might be simple, but the story is another method of adding an immense amount of depth to the game. Also, since I mentioned rhythm games, take Persona Dancing, the game series, for another example of uncomplicated, but also deep gameplay. Essentially, players just need to tap the correct buttons in time with the beat of the song. Yet, with more advanced songs and increased difficulty, notes come faster. Some notes can start being held, and some notes start following other instruments rather than just the beat of the drums, like guitar, bass, piano, and vocals, as well as other instruments. Additionally, you will quickly note a bonus fever mode that can boost your score, 
prevent failure in tough note sections, and simply rewards you for acing a particular section of the song. All these adjustments to the gameplay mechanics get you to start thinking about how to optimize your score, and adding so much more to the apparent undemanding nature of the game. It's awesome. There are tons of other genres that also utilize this idea of simple, yet meaningful and engaging. I've only touched the surface of the library of games I could refer to, but these are just some of my thoughts. So, what do you think? What are some of your favorite simple games, and why? Tell me about it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and leave a like if you enjoyed, or a dislike if you didn't. That's fine too. Subscribe for more, and until next time, remember to keep a G.